Antonio coin flip. And remember, they're both New York kids. <laughs> so heads or tails, you gotta be equally happy. <laughs> So we're at Universal now. Um, yeah, we're drinking butter beer. Um, it's actually really good. And my mom's on the Hogwarts ride right now. Um, I'm actually not sure what it is. Um, but yeah, now we're just kind of out here and wait, because Reese isn't tall enough to go on. So, yeah, but mom is a really big Harry Potter fan, so. Yep.
Make us the fine ones since 382. Uh, I am the wand keeper, and you've all come here to witness the wand fitting. Now, I must tell you, I sense a powerful or oh, interesting magic. <coughs> Are you here together? Yes, are you here for your wands? Wonderful. Please step into the light. Rabbi, see you all here. What are your names? Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Now, which are your wand arms? Left or right? Right and right. Could you hold them out like this for me? Come a bit closer, my dear. There you are, a little bit closer. Now you may know that every Ollivander's wand, thank you, has a core consisting of a powerful magical substance, thank you. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the hot strings of dragons. And no two Ollivander wands are the same. Just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are quite the same. A wand of ivy. It's 13 inches long, flexible, with a, a dragon's heartstring core. I want you to take this in. Now let's try a spell, shall we? Oh, I'd like you to ring that bell there, a non-verbal spell. Ring that bell just one time, please. Go on, just give your wand a wave. There we are. Definitely not your wand. Not to worry. Hold on to it. Just be careful. We'll come back to you in a moment. Your turn, my dear. A wand of holly. It's 15 inches long, nice and supple, with a... Ooh, also, a dragon's heartstring core. Interesting. Now, let me see. Oh, yes. I'd like you to water those flowers up there. Now, just give your wand a wave and say, Aguamente! There we are. Right before, right behind Ted, you're going to see these buildings. Now, these are what we call our bungalows. And these bungalows were actually dressing rooms for some Hollywood monasteries in the Golden Age, like Rock Hudson, Tony Curtis, Doris Day. We are going to see our New York Street a little bit more up close and personal in just a little bit. For now, we're actually going to see one of the most famous or most used sets, I guess I should say, here in our back lot. It's what we call our Brownstone Street. Sorry, Jim Carrey. Take a look. There it is, our brownstone street. Now it does look a little different in this scene than it does here in a real life. That's because these sets can be changed at a moment's notice depending on what the script calls for. For this scene, they put a tree, some uh, signs, poles, patches of grass. Any of these sets can be changed depending on the location, the season, or even the time period. And you know what, speaking of time period, it's at Art Court House Square, where they shot Back to the Future in the 80s. Welcome, everybody. Left, you can see that structure that says City Hall. That was actually seen as the clock tower. It was actually the back lot of the courthouse square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had scenes up at the clock tower on that ledge. The little ledge felt that wide. And I was standing inside looking at the ledge and I already had vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable in the way. <laughs> yeah, that clock tower became so recognizable right after Back to the Future that they had to change the appearance of it just a little bit, creating a facade in front of it. Our courthouse square was also a reoccurring set on the show Ghost Whisper. We'll see here to tell us a little bit more about our New York Street is the lovely Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. What's got mugged over there? An old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Yeah, it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. 
so it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. And we probably have it out here. So many movies have shot here Metro sets. Seeds of Captain America, The Amazing Spider-Man, Transformers, Fast and Furious. Also TV shows like How I Met Your Mother and American Ninja Warrior. But take note that Mr. Steven Spielberg actually oversaw the design of those beautiful Metro sets. And we love our directors here like Steven Spielberg, Alfred Hitchcock, or the director of King Kong, Mr. Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong. of recognizable vehicles out here like Kip from the 2008 Knight Rider series, next that Tom Selleck's Ferrari from Magnum P.I. and of course we have a bunch of those cars from Back to the Future which are actually from the very very distant year of uh, 2015. That's uh, something to think about. But you know what, during, uh, sorry, next to that, you can see the Flintstone cars. And those are the first eco-friendly vehicles here on our lot, running all day on foot power, which is pretty incredible. But of course, we cannot be talking about picture cars without mentioning the Fast and Furious franchise. Now many of the cars that you're seeing right now don't actually work. Many of them are made out of lightweight materials like fiberglass and wood. Why? It's so we can throw those cars up easily in the air for action scenes. It makes it a lot easier than actually throwing up a real car. Now up ahead past these Fast and Furious cars, I hope you can, uh, can see the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. Now Jurassic World and a lot of these movies are no strangers to special effects. In fact, we just saw that King Kong experience, which of course had many visual effects on its own. Take a look at some other Universal movies have used a lot of these effects. And I think I'm seeing some lightning too, but that's crazy. I mean, this is sunny Southern California. It never Whoa! rains. Whoa! Well, I guess it's a little cloudy today, so I guess that kind of makes sense. But it feels like it's raining pretty hard. That's not usually how it happens. Um, hold on, guys. Give me one second. It looks like we're trying to get a message. Uh, a flash flood warning for old Mexico. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, we're in old Mexico. So listen, if you're seated in a blue seat, just watch out, okay? That means you are in the splash oh, zone. And you may be noticing all of the seats are... And now here it comes to the first and second car, ready? There you go. Uh, not to worry though, none of that was real. If you looked up, the rain is a sprinkler system. And that flash flood is simply the result of thousands of gallons that are being recycled and thrown from the top of the hill, but flood was featured in this scene from the movie Big Fat Liar, starring Freaky Buddha's Amanda Bynes and Paul G. Hattie. <laughs> Oh, poor Paul Giamatti. And we can see a little bit more of 
more of our old Mexico sets right now. And they've also shot some music videos out here like Escapade by Janet Jack. So everybody gets right here on the world famous Universal Studios. So I know what you're all thinking. You're just sitting there and you're like, wow, uh, that is the most realistic looking shark I've ever seen in my entire life. And I agree with you, but don't worry, it's not real. It's a fake plastic mechanical shark, but it does have a name. Its name is Bruce and Mr. Stevens. Set up for the mazes for Halloween Horror Nights. So if you see anything pretty frightening, don't worry, it's all part of Halloween Horror Nights. But yes, welcome to Whoville. How the Greensville Christmas is one of the largest productions to ever take place here on our lawn. They use 11 sound stages in our front lawn and sets like the ones that you just saw here in our back lawn. But you know what? The lovely residents of Whoville had much bigger problems than just a bridge. Out here on our back lawn, they happen to live next door to Mr. Norman Bates. From the 1960s thriller by Mr. Albert Hitchcock, Psycho. Welcome to the Bates Motel. Very carefully in the second floor window, if you can, you might see Mother in her rocket chair. Looks like a skeleton. Well, speaking of terrifying things, I'm oh. sure one of the scariest things I could ever imagine. It's the War of the Worlds at time. Mr. Steven Spielberg will welcome everybody. And that airplane that you can see over there on the left was actually bought and destroyed for the sole purposes of the film. Also, they're fetching $60,000 for that airplane, then $200,000 on top of that to ship it out here to Southern California. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. We just did the Universal like set tour thing. It was really cool. Not even just the um, the Jurassic Park thing like you saw, um, but like I actually really like the other bits of it too that you know showed off all sorts of stuff. Um, I, my, my favorite part was the Back to the Future courtyard area because I really like those movies. It actually got wet too. Yeah, it got wet. Um, not much though. Yeah, like got slobbed. The dinosaur that spit the dinosaur that spits on you almost got me. But not much. Yeah, it went like behind me. Um, yeah. Universal 
and Reese is a ghost. Um, they just went down to the pool and I had a shower. Um, so we got back and we got some snacks. Um, we also got the sprinkled donut like cups. You know, those are really cool. We also. Oh, I'm gonna grab one and show. But you need clothes on first. Oh, um, we also had the sprinkled donuts themselves. So this. So it's it's this. There's like slushy inside. Yeah, you can put whatever you want on it, but it's a cup. Um, I also got a Duff beer. Water bottle thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, got a Dr Pepper. Oh, and that the Star Wars thing we made our own droids. Yeah, we made our own droids and stuff. There's well, just been a lot of really cool stuff. Show that. Um, Here's your droid right here. No, it's fine. I'll show them when we get home. Okay. Um. Show the bag of droids. <laughs> I will show what I want. How about that? Um. <laughs> we got all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, it's, um, kind of, it's kind of packed in here, actually, if I'm being honest. It's not. I got a bow blower. I'm going to have to grab that. Sure. So, me and Reese got a bubble blower. See? This. It's like a Mickey thing. Yeah. It's a bubble wand. You can even just have it light up. Yeah, and if you put it to the top, it blows bubbles and lights up. Yeah, just make a bubble blow. Exactly. Put it back now. Okay. Anyway, that's it for today. Tomorrow, we're pretty much going to be trying to check out other places in Disneyland yeah, like, that we haven't been to yet. Um, although we're probably, we're probably going to go back to... Um, we're we're going to go to a couple places we've already been. Um, like Grizzly Peak, probably. Grizzly Peak, which is the <laughs> water ride they keep going on. Yeah, I'm and... Hmm? I'm oh. Um, and then we're also probably going to go on the Star Tours thing. Yeah. Just, um, otherwise, yeah, that's it for today. See you guys tomorrow.